we actually want to undo the options and change a few things. Namely the storyline. It we don't want that on actually, we want it off. So it saves a lot of time. Right. So counter. Three, two, one, go. So this game is a it's a really basic platformer. You got you jump and you got whip and you got your directional movements and you can crouch. But that's basically it. So pretty straightforward. This first level we have two objectives. We gotta hit this army bucket and we gotta hit the walkie-talkie at the end. I'll try to do something called a 10 frame jump right here. See if we can get it. There we go. If you hold jump for exactly 10 frames, you'll jump slightly higher up than you normally would. So that means you can reach some ledges that are usually too high for a normal jump. Kind of a weird mechanic to start off, you know, with a one frame trick. All right, this is red alert. It's uh, timer based. So Annie is coming up to his room and we got to hide all the toys away. We'll start off by actually not hiding these first ones. The main bottleneck of this level is Rocky here. So there we go. And then we're getting to the beginning of this level here. I'm setting up a grouping strat here. Oh. There we go. All of them at once. The best time you can get in this level is a 132. Although you could, if you're unfortunate, you could get a 108. So don't do that. But it's pretty straightforward. All right, so everyone is waiting for me to say this, but this is Ego Check and shout out to Germro. This is probably the first difficult level in the game. It's a uh, pretty straightforward platforming. It's a pretty long level too, and there's a lot of obstacles coming up. And uh, this is the first level where damage boosting becomes relevant. That was a clown jump, by the way. And uh, everything in this game does one damage to you. So you want to figure out where exactly you want to take damage. And you can also use these hooks, they save a little bit of time if you do correctly. So this is a good example here, we'll just boost across the bottom here. See if we can get this jump. Nice. The invincibility frames are actually pretty long too, so you have plenty of time to run through many enemies. It's all about when exactly you want to de-boost. Alright, and that's Ego Check. So coming up here is the first boss battle of the game. This is Nightmare Buzz. It's uh, a really, kind of a ridiculous boss fight, to be honest. Buzz is, Witty is having a nightmare about Buzz here, and so he comes up with this cheese balls shield right here that you gotta get rid of before he can start dealing damage. And obviously he's such a nice guy that he tells you what he's about to do. It's like, you don't want to be in the way when I laser goes off. Yeah, thanks Buzz. And there we go. Yeah, th this game has, it has a few voice lines, but they're used very often. And we'll get to that a little later on. All right, this is a bus clip. Is This is the first racing level in the game. And uh, the movement is, Really slippery, I just messed that up actually. So I'll need to grab this battery. Okay, let's grab the next one. Uh, it's it's a really straightforward level. You basically just need to hit every buzz along the way and grab the battery so you can stay powered. But yeah, just follow this path. 
And I guess now would be a good time for donations. Uh, we don't actually have any donations, but uh, I do like. I would like to thank some of our partners, if that's okay. Sure. You know, mainly Twitch because you are actually viewing this stream on Twitch, and without them, without their help, and without their site, you would be able to enjoy such a great marathon. So yeah, thank you, Twitch. And if you want to use your Twitch Prime on this channel, you can, and it will go to uh, saving the children. So hitting the final bus there, which ends the level. It's I crashed quite often. It's the movement doesn't really scale well on the SNES version, unfortunately. So it's really, it's kind of hard to drive in that level. Right, so back to platforming. This is Revenge of the Toys. There's one objective in this level. You need to free Rex by wrecking these blocks. And that's that much it. That's pretty much it. So just platform. A lot of fun. Snipe that guy. And that's a pretty good example of a D-boost right there. Watch out for the golden shower. Got it. We want to exit this level with two health, and I'll get into that in a moment. Let's bank that guy a little bit first. Alright, so. This is Run Rick's Run. This is the first auto-scroller in the game. I want to talk a little bit about the how this bonus stars in this game works. Because every level has 50 stars. And for some reason, this level only has 48. If you collect 50 stars in a level, you will get an extra life by the next level. If you collect 49 stars, you will get 4 extra health points. So it's basically a full health refill. If you collect 48 stars, you'll get 3 and 47 too, and so on. So, we, we want to collect every star in this level so that we have collected 48 and that way we will get 3 health points and we'll start off the next level with 5 health. We really don't want to collect 50 stars at all. I'm going to skip 1 star in some levels just because it's going to give us a full health refill. If you would only get an extra life, you, would, you could just die and respawn and that would give you a full health refill. But Respawning takes over five seconds, so it's not ideal at all. All right, so coming up is another boss battle here, or as the developers always put it so nicely, boss battle. I'm actually going to need a fungineer time for this because it's quite precise. Alright, that was too early. So, on the US version, which we are running on at the moment, for some reason you can hit the tire as soon as Buzz is, does his spin attack. You're not supposed to do that, it was fixed on the other versions. But that means that Buzz never really gets to do anything in this level. You get to hit him all, over and over again. And it saves around 8 to 10 seconds per skipped cycle. And that was a two cycle. You can get a one cycle too, but it's it's really precise. Right, so this is food and drink. And it's a really basic level. You just dodge all these uh, burgers and fries and hot dogs. That's pretty much it. This restaurant is apparently, you know, there's so much food everywhere, but there's no people around for some reason. Uh, you saw me skipping one star there at the beginning, and that's because we, again, we want 49 stars and not 50 to get a full health refill. And there's this kid who is going, he's running around the restaurant. I don't know where his parents are, but he, he keeps running around like this and you have to dodge. Uh, that's basically, for some reason, he has paper legs too. Shoutouts to Jimmy1717.
MS legs. And we made it. So I didn't really damage boost most that much in that level. Ideally, you should end that with one health and get a full health, health refill by the next one. But this time I decided to play it safe. This is inside the claw machine. This is the hardest level in the speed game. Uh, it's a good example of how everything in this game is based on cycles, really. It's just that some of the platforming is still so precise to pull off. But it's predictable, in a sense. Oh, too early. This level is actually really laggy as well. You'll get to see that it stutters pretty often. And uh, I used the lag reduction strat to blow these fuses off one by one. And this fan is pretty much impossible to dodge. Alright, so that was inside the claw machine, but that's not enough, because now we're really inside the claw machine. This level is a Doom clone, basically, so pretty straightforward. You're supposed to grab these aliens and Hello. just rescue them. And, uh, well, it's not much to say. We have a new route for this level, but it's... It's so simple that you can pretty much follow everything. The reason why I'm walking backwards is, although it's, it is faster to do it, but it's not, not mainly because the movement speed is faster. It's because it takes a lot of time to turn around. So yeah, I'll try to get a uh, around 60, perhaps a 58 or 59 in this level, if I do the route correctly. But I guess now would also be a good time for donations if you have any. I actually don't, but we do have an upcoming incentive for Rise and Shine, which is in three hours to kill a dog of uh, Duck Hunt that is hidden somewhere in the game. So if you want to do to have that, we are two hundred dollars away, I think, from meeting it. So put your dollars. Alright, so, another good example of random voice lines being spammed. Woody yelling hello all the time in this level. Alright, so this next level, it's actually a boss fight, but I'm going to skip this because I don't like this level. It's, uh, you'll see what happens. Oops. Alright, we'll try to do the backup now. So basically, this boss fight is kind of odd because you're supposed to hit the claw with all these aliens. I just got the skip now. For some reason, if you sp spawn too many aliens at the same time, the game just freaks out and it's like, all right, next level. And we believe it happens because of an error handler in the game. But that's pretty much it. And it's that's a pretty long fight. It saves over a minute, so. The fight itself is also pretty not so fun to do. It's also one of the reasons why the SNES version is better than the Genesis version, by the way. Alright, so Sid's workbench, you can't jump down at the bottom, unlike Ego Check, so 
trying to be a little bit more careful here. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but the platforming is rather basic. So, oh, I jumped a little bit too early there. Uh, I try to do something called a sit skip. I'll try to do it again. So, there's a sequence right here that I'm skipping by facing left. And now I just activated it by facing right. So, this ball here will be all glitchy and... Yeah, there's the cornflakes. So, this is that's normally what's supposed to happen. There are two sequences and you, Woody just falls down and Sid come, comes in and all that. But you, you can actually skip that on the US version if you face left. And that was one found by EasyGame69, so shoutouts to him. More voice lines. And down into the cornflakes. Alright. Final platforming stage. Battle of the Mutant Toys. So, there's some RNG elements in this level that we're going to watch out for. And it's basically these uh, firecrackers here. I didn't get sniped, but firecrackers or cheese balls and uh, you might hear this wrench sound it's like ting 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 and for some reason that happens I think it tends to happen if you do the claw skip actually but it's weird all right so these firecrackers there are probably more pseudo RNG if anything I think everything is still scripted so if you would play exactly the same, you would get the same kind of shots from the firecrackers. Alright, so here we got Buzz with a karate chop. The hitboxes in the SNES version are not good compared to the Genesis version where they're like almost pixel perfect. That makes this battle particularly difficult. It's uh, it's such an odd distance that you have to hit these from. And there's a certain cooldown to it as well. <laughs> All right, so Roller Bob. And this used to be the scariest level in the entire run. Being at one of the last levels, and it's also an auto scroller, which, you know, normally you wouldn't be scared of an auto scroller. But the problem is, the hitboxes, like I said, are kind of finicky. And there's also the fact that jumps do not scale well on the SNES version. So, there's also one more thing to it the Genesis version, which I believe is the original, and the sense version was basically ported from that. I just uh, took a hit there so that I could respawn it right at the checkpoint. But I believe that the Genesis version is actually wider, so you get to see a little bit further what's coming up on screen. Entering this final part of the stage. I really like how there's there's so much going on on the screen. But that's pretty much it. We did it. Alright, so coming up is another racing level. It's uh, the soundtrack, which the soundtrack for the entire game is actually quite good. But this level in particular is my favorite. Although it's kind of ridiculous, so if you have any do donations now, that would be appropriate. We actually do. We got $5 from Kissily saying, I'm donating now, so there will be at least one message to read. Thank you very much. Keep on doing the good work and good luck to Unmet on Toy Story Run. Thanks.
And that's it. That level is... There's no directions or anything once you learn it, but when you have learned it, it's really straightforward. All right, Rocket Man. So this game, for some reason, they decided to put the final, uh, use an auto scroller as a final. So we are flying here at the end, trying to dodge all these vehicles. There's no strategy that I used in particular. Uh, I basically just follow all these stars. Although, if you die, that might be a problem because every star that you have collected are still kept. So, you won't see the trail then. But again, the music is really hype at least. All right, let's get the trailer star. And the bus spam. Shoutouts to Yami Amarillo. Here it comes. With a trailer dive. And time coming up here soon. Pretty soon. I'm just going to do this slam dunk here at the end. Here it comes. Slam dunk and time. Watch out. So that's Toy Story, and um, I would like to start out by giving a huge shout out to the Toy Story community. We're, we're a pretty small, growing community, but there's a lot of great people there. Uh, a few special thanks. Uh, first to Kipples, he's a great runner, and he made this game a lot more competitive than what it used to be. Um, Jermro for running this at AGDQ. I would like to thank Easy Games for making the tasks. And finally, last but not least, Yami Amarillo and Jimmy1717. They were here before me. I took a lot of inspiration for their run. So, yeah, that's pretty much wraps it up, I guess. So, I'm Emmett, and thank you for watching. <laughs>